Hello, I'm Wonder001, and this is my review of the OEM Aero Crossbar set for, in this case, uh, my 2015 Subaru Forester. Uh, this particular OEM crossbar, I was considering getting a aftermarket, but price-wise, while the aftermarket had a could have a heavier load uh, as compared to the 150 max load that these could carry, uh, I really just wanted to have a cargo box and if I need better bars later, I can get them uh, because the price of these was reasonably cheap, so I didn't have to worry. So you have a few choices when you are purchasing these. You can either go directly to your local dealer uh, and get their price there, or you can get them online. Now, I will state with getting them online, here I've got my little cheat sheet. On site, they were $178 at my local dealer. Uh, they did drop them down uh, $10 to $168 because I purchased my vehicle from them. So that was nice of the parts department. Online, uh, at the same dealership that I went to in person, they were $143 and $168 uh, with shipping. Now this does not include tax. Now there's two other dealers that are close by me. One was $152 and the other one was $175 and that's without shipping. So do your math, figure out which one's gonna work best for you. And uh, in my case, it just ended up being better to go directly to the dealer. So speaking of the dealer, this is what you get. And uh, I'm gonna show you this right here for one moment, only because this is something that really annoyed me. There were no directions included in the box. They send you to a particular website. The website actually makes you register and pay a fee to get access to these materials. So in the description area below, I will link to where I got these for free because a paper copy of the directions in the box, like you should. Speaking of in the box, what do you get? Well, here we have our Subaru OEM T30 Torx screwdriver, right there, you can see that, all nice in the plastic. And then you get your two arrow crossbars. Now, as you can see, I have left them in the bubble wrap just so you can see how they come. Uh, one is longer than the other, and the longer one is supposed to be for your front section of your vehicle, and then the longer one, or the shorter one will be the rear. Uh, easiest way to tell, because you can't really eyeball them, but if you just push them in the box, you can see, in my case, this one is the longer one. Flipping one over, you will see that there is an arrow indicating which of the section should be facing forward and which side of the vehicle it should be on. Right there, it says R. Uh, all of them have these little stickers over the screws, which is how you open those clamps, which I'll show you when I install them, because uh, you loosen the screw up, so that little sticker there is covering up the screw. I'm not sure if I'm going to leave those stickers on or not, but uh, for the time being I am. And there you go, just a long quick section of that, and I'll pull one out so you can get a section. The, the front portion is actually portion is a little wider, not really showing up on camera all that well, maybe if I do that. There's the front portion, and then that's the rear. So that's your crossbars. So why don't we go and put them on? All right, so here I've unwrapped the, uh, the front bar so that you can see there is the one screw there, which opens up this clamp here, which fits around your rails. Now, the idea is that as you loosen it, this just kind of opens up and you twist it and you can rest this on top of your rail. Uh, so again, the included T30, and you just sit here and loosen it up. And then hopefully you can kind of see that slowly dropping underneath. Notice that the channel is getting a little bigger and you just kind of wiggle it and there you can see. Now I'd be able to drop that around the crossbar and you just do the same on both sides and then uh, once I do that I'll get this up on top and show you what it looks like. So for those that may be concerned about uh, hurting your roof rails, there is this rubberized gasket in between to kind of keep your roof rails from scratching. Notice it says R right there and then in the front it also says R and R but like I said it does not indicate as to which one is the front bar. You just have to kind of use the box as a quick cheap way to do that. Now one thing that they talk about is placement of the bar in the instructions which were not included 
you're looking at doing six inches from the front of the roof rail. So one thing that you probably want to bring with you uh, when you're installing these is measuring tape. All right, so to, to start off, you're going to make sure that you swing your uh, clamp out and then you just kind of can roughly place it where you want it. So right there, that's in place. Uh, then you kind of come back and measure, which probably would have been smarter to do at first, but we can slide this as needed and then you can drape the bar across, make sure the other side is also open uh, so that you can place it correctly. So we're just going to measure these out and swing this around to clamp it down um, and show you what that looks like a little later. So just, pardon? Yeah. So just tighten this down, the included screwdriver. And you're going to want to tighten both ends before fully tightening this down. So I'm just gonna screw, uh, tighten that other end down. And then what you're gonna do after you fully tighten it, you're gonna give it a wiggle this way and this way to make sure that it's stable and not moving. Okay. So we've got one foot placed and the other is slightly off the rail. This is one of the problems I had before, but if you grab the center here and give it a little pull, it will shift the locking mechanism out a little further and give you a better foothold. So from here I can Swing the lock part into place and then just tighten it down. Again, not fully tightening it and tightening the other side. And that is what the OEM arrow crossbars look like after being fully installed. And we're just gonna take a walk along the side here and into the breeze, so sorry about that. Can I show you what the side looks like there? And what it looks like on the back. So it does raise uh, a bit off of what the rails do, but they are supposed to be aerodynamic. So I will test and find out if there's any uh, MPG loss. But aside from uh, taking a little longer to install, because I was trying to film, they're not too bad. Now the grip part, as I'll call it, those take up a little bit of extra space. So really you've got a little narrower area for placing cargo, but uh, this should fit the box that I got now. So the one thing with the arrow blades that I have noticed is, well, up front you have enough that it's not sitting on the foot in the back underneath the bug splatter there, you can see that this particular cargo box is actually sitting on the foot and not the blade itself. I also did notice a little bit of flexing, more than I thought I would, uh, when I put this particular cargo box on, uh, and the cargo box itself is only 34 pounds. This is the optimal spacing. I may have to move the rear bar up a little bit more because I don't have a shark fin antenna. I've got the old rubber one and I don't know if my cargo box is going to hit that. But uh, this is the spacing or at least the optimal placement for the OEM Aero crossbars. So after using the OEM crossbars for quite a while, uh, probably like 500 miles, uh, both highway and local, noticed that there was no real notice of change in MPG on highway or local roads. So that means the aero crossbars do not offer any more drag than you're already getting with the roof rails. Uh, sadly, you kind of see the uh, bug splatter from my last trip there. Uh, there was a little bit of flex when I put a cargo box on top of this. And because of the optimal placing, the cargo box actually pushed up against my uh, antenna there. You can kind of see it's still a little crooked, but all in all, the ease of use and ease of acquiring these uh, arrow crossbars make them well worth 
checking out, especially if you're just starting off needing crossbars. So I would, I would recommend uh, picking them up from your local Subaru dealer or going online and using that little cheat I was telling you about to make sure that you're paying the uh, cheapest for these. So, I have been Wonder001. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the area below. And as always, thanks for watching.